Hello, everyone, and um, thanks to everybody who's after taking the time to jump on to today's webinar. Um, my own name is David Looney. I work as a financial advisor in Alpha Welch. Uh, I've been working in the industry now for about 10 years or so, uh, and today's webinar is Beating the System, How Average People Can Successfully Build Wealth. Um, and it's not some get-rich-quick gimmick uh, before anyone gets turned off. It's really just some kind of, I suppose, uh, strategies that people can implement into their own situation to really improve their financial situation and make the most out of the position that they're in currently and make the most out of their earnings. And um, just before we get into the throes of things, we're just going to pop up a quick poll, um, if people wouldn't mind answering it, just to make it a bit more interactive and allow anyone who's running late uh, a bit more time to get on. Do you want to share the, the poll there, Ruth? Is that poll up, Ruth? Okay, I'd say the poll might not be working, guys. So look, we'll just kick on with things. And um, so for anyone um, who might not be too familiar with Alpha Well, there might not be or sorry, might be on one of these webinars for the first time. Um, just want to start off by giving you guys a quick introduction to who we are and what we do. Um, we basically run an impartial financial planning and advisory company in Cork. We have 10 staff members in AlphaWell currently uh, who include QFA and CFP qualified advisors. Uh, and it's basically you know, working with individuals like yourself and really helping you guys to improve your financial situation and your financial future. Uh, we basically provide specialist advice and solutions and things like financial planning, savings and investments, retirement planning and pensions, uh, protection, tax, mortgages, everything really within that personal finance space. I'm delighted to say at this stage we're coming up to our 10th year anniversary, which we will be celebrating this April. And over that period, we've amassed 4,000 clients from all around Ireland who now have over 250 million of assets under management with us. And so I suppose myself and the Alpha World team have a lot of years of experience and um, working with people like you um, and you know helping you on your financial planning journey. So just to kick off the webinar on a positive note, um, I do believe that there is some good news for our personal finances this year in 2024. Uh, so what has changed between this year and last year? I suppose the big change came in the budget last year where the government increased the higher rate income tax threshold from 40,000 to 42,000, as well as some changes to the USC bans. So what that means is that most people in Ireland should be better off in their paycheck um, this year versus last year. And I'm sure people who got paid maybe last week or the week before might have already seen that um, if they were earning the same salary. So what that means is that, say, a single person who's earning maybe a salary of 50, 60K per year would be better off to, to the tune of about 70 euro per month. And a couple earning a combined income of maybe 100,000 euro a year would be better off to the tune of about 130 euro per month. In addition to that, hopefully all of our expenses are also going to be reduced this year because you have things like mortgage interest relief, um, which is 1,250 for people that are impacted from the increases in interest rates last year um, through the rate hikes we've seen. So those people that are on track or in variable rate mortgages can now claim 1,250 back. And um, if you haven't done so and it applies to you, I would get on that um, as soon as possible. We did get a further 300 euro in energy credits um, plus the 150 we got in December. The rental credit uh, was increased to 750 euro per person. So for a couple renting an apartment, let's say that's 1,500 euro that could be claimed back. Um, badly needed was a 25% reduction in childcare costs, a reduction in college fees for families earning less than 100,000 euro a year. Um, and to coincide with that, it does look like inflation is starting to cool. The central bank look like they're stopping interest rate hikes and energy costs are also starting to reduce. So you can see an article that I took just yesterday noting that inflation has fallen to 2.7%. So that's the, I suppose, the lowest figure now recorded in a, a good while. It was up at around 9% at some periods last year. So the bottom line is that, look, hopefully most people on the webinar today will be in a situation where they're take home pay has slightly increased and their expenses have reduced and therefore have a bit more disposable income and a bit more breathing space. So I suppose when I'm working with clients here in the office and we're going through the financial planning and consultation process, 
the first step is always really about identifying what people are trying to achieve. You know, everyone on the call today, I'm sure, works very hard. You know, you're getting up for work every day. You're earning a salary uh, or, or income. And I think sometimes it's important to just take a step back and say, OK, what am I really trying to achieve from this? You know, what is the end goal for me? Um, I hear things like becoming debt free, you know, being able to buy a property, uh, saving for um, maybe, you know, retirement or children's education. Um, ensuring that my family might be looked after, reducing my tax, it might even be a combination of all of the above. And um, the one common objective that we try to, I suppose, achieve for all of our clients in Alpha World is to get them to a point of financial independence as soon as possible, which is where they reach a stage in life where they have enough wealth and assets built up where they have the option to retire. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, full on retirement where you kind of hang up your boots, but it's more about saying, I have the option to give up work today and I will be financially comfortable, you know, so there's a great financial freedom that with, with, comes with that. Um, and I think everybody on the call today will appreciate that to achieve most of these things, it will involve building up financial assets or creating wealth over our lifetimes. And it's really important to have a bit of a roadmap on how we're going to achieve those. So do we bury our head in the sand and suddenly, you know, we're into our late 50s, 60s and we find out that we, you know, should have done a lot of things different. We don't have a lot of money set aside and we're forced to keep, you know, working away until our late 60s or 70s until the state pension age kicks in. Um, or do we really make it some proactive steps on it now to get ourselves into the, the best possible position? Um, and it is, of course, really important to get some good advice um, around that. So when it comes to accumulating wealth over the long term, from my experience working in the industry, there's three main challenges I think people face uh, sometimes when they're trying to accumulate wealth or maybe certain things that they might ignore. And um, outside, of course, their, their earnings capacity, which is important, but it's more about what, what, what you're doing with your earnings. Um, the one thing that I think a lot of people underestimate is the impact that tax has on accumulating wealth. So um, naturally, we'll suffer 20% or 40% income tax on our salaries or our income in addition to USC and PRSI. And then if we're trying to save our after-tax income, the interest that that achieves is also taxed by a further 33 to 41%. So I suppose if we completely ignore tax, it's really say, difficult to accumulate large levels of wealth over time. Um, now, we have to accept tax to some degree it's a reality of life but there are vehicles out there to avoid tax or to reduce tax significantly particularly for our longer term savings so it's really about you know are we operating in the most tax efficient way possible for a particular objective and the other thing i want to talk about is inflation which i touched on earlier and and for anyone who doesn't know inflation is basically the rate of increase in the price of goods and services each year and so you know i mentioned figures earlier of 2.7%, 9%, but on average, historically, inflation comes in around 3% per year, which means everything is more expensive on average by about 3% per year. So what that, does that mean for, I suppose, you know, long-term wealth generation? It means that if our savings aren't earning a net return of 3% per year, you're actually losing value and you're going backwards. And it's really devastating over time. So it's really important that people realize how impactful inflation can be um, and come to the realization that no bank credit union or on cost account in Ireland gives an inflation beating return. So they really are a waste of time and money for wealth creation, but they're absolutely okay for short term savings within that say one to four year bracket. You're going on holidays, you're changing the car, you're saving for a wedding, you're saving for a house. Absolutely fine. But when it comes to long term wealth creation, complete waste of time. And um, and just to stress that, if people don't think inflation is a big deal, we're just going to look at a quick example here. So we have Mary, OK, and she hears that the average cost to send children through third level education is around 30 grand a year. So what she does is she ring fences this amount in a bank account earning one and a half percent per year or one percent per year after dirt deposit interest retention tax. After 18 years, Mary's account is worth 35,400. However, the cost of education has rose to over 51 grand at a 3% per year average inflation rate. So as a result, Mary has lost over 15 and a half thousand in real terms, our purchasing power, and she doesn't have enough to meet her objective. So it just goes to show you how devastating inflation can be. And if there is anybody on the call who might be say, saving for their children's education and they're using an unpost account or a credit union account, 
I mean this, you know, with the, the, the greatest sincerity, you are, you know, wasting your time and your money and there are much more efficient vehicles for you to do that. Um, and you really need to get some, I suppose, proper advice when, when it comes to that objective and make sure that your money is at least keeping pace with inflation. The third thing, um, our, you know, the third challenge um, I come across or maybe something that people don't put as much focus on is, is they stick to their bank accounts and their credit union accounts a bit too much. You know, I touched on it on the previous slide. Um, but as a result of do, doing that, they fail to understand the importance of compound interest and investing over time. Uh, so Albert Einstein once famously said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He said those who understand it earn it, those who don't pay it what is compound interest? Essentially, it's interest on top of interest on top of interest indefinitely. And um, so it kind of creates a bit of a snowballing effect over time. And as a result, it's a vital component of efficiently growing wealth over time. Just to show you how compound interest works. So let's say we have a lump sum of 100,000 euro that's growing at 5% per year simple interest, which is what you get in your bank or your credit union. Over 20 years, that would be worth 200,000. However, the same amount getting 5% per year compound interest over 20 years would be worth 265,000. So there's a 65 grand difference between a simple interest and compound interest over a 20 year period if earning 5% per year. As I already stated, banks, credit unions and Unpost offers you simple interest, but investing offers you compound interest. So what does ignoring these three things looks like over the long term again we take mary here uh, she's not a, a fan of investing as we talked about earlier uh, she's aged 30 and she saves 1000 euro every month to her bank earning a one percent per year net interest her save or uh, she gets a pay rise of two percent every year okay so she also increases her savings by two percent per year she doesn't have a pension and she doesn't invest after 25 years of Mary saving a thousand euro every month, which I'm sure everybody will agree is a, is a large amount of money to be saving on a monthly basis, she's going to have an account worth 444,000. However, in today's terms, after inflation, it's worth just 212,000. Now, some of you might think that 212,000 is you know a large pot of money, and it is, but given that Mary is 55 and she's expected to maybe live for another 30 years, is that enough to be financially independent? Does it, can Mary actually give up work? What level of income would a fund like that provide before running out and reducing them to zero? The answer is about 8,200 euro a year in today's monies, assuming that that's to last for that 30 year uh, period and it needs to be increased each year to keep pace with inflation. So Mary spent the last 25 years saving a significant amount of her income and she still isn't financially successful or financially independent. And I'm not saying that people are wasting their time saving 1,000 euro every month. But what I am saying is that if you're in a position where you are putting money to the side every month, make sure that it's going into the right places. Because if you do ignore things like, you know, tax, inflation, um, you know, not keeping pace with inflation, it's really devastating. And you are just kind of going back, uh, backwards, essentially. Um, whereas you could have improved your situa situation much uh, more favorably, which I'll be showing you in a second. So we've already seen that it's clearly near impossible for the average person to generate significant wealth if we're saving after tax earnings. So how can we benefit from compound interest, beat inflation and pay no tax all into one? And the most efficient way to do that is to maximize the use of a pension. Now, there's a lot of confusion in Ireland as to what a pension is. People think their money goes into a black hole. They don't really understand it. But all it really is is just a long term savings plan. And it is the most effective way of accumulating money over the long term. The reasons for that is that it actually allows you to save your before tax earnings, not your after tax earnings. And then it allows you to invest those before tax earnings in instruments which earn positive growth. And it allows that growth to compound over a very long period, completely tax free, which adds rocket fuel to your savings. So for each 100 euro put to a pension as a top rate taxpayer, it only actually costs you 60 euro, which is equivalent to a 66 percent immediate return. You show me another investment where you give me 60 euro and it immediately turns into 100 euro even before that money is invested. And when that money is invested, it also grows tax free. So the three most common queries I get asked when it comes to a pension, how much can I pay into it? And the answer to that is dependent on your age and your earnings. So for those of you who are under 30, 
you can pay in 15% and that gradually rises on a scale uh, to 40% of those <coughs> who are 60 and over. <coughs> Excuse me, that does not uh, include employer contributions, by the way. So sometimes I meet people and they say, oh, I'm maxing out my pension. I'm 32. I'm paying in 10 percent and the company's paying in 10 percent. You're not. You can pay in 20 percent and your company can pay in 10 percent on top of that. And um, other uh, sorry, it's noting uh, worth noting as well that your income is actually capped at 115,000. So if you're earning, say, 150 grand a year, you can still only pay in. 25% of the 115 grand if you are uh, in that 40 to 49 cohort. How much should I pay in? Um, as close to the above as possible without you know locking yourself inside your house and not being able to enjoy life because balance is important, of course. And um, sometimes it might be a case of starting your pension small and looking to increase at each available opportunity. I mentioned that, um, sorry, I mentioned earlier that everybody should be better off. Well, not everybody, but most people should be better off to the tune of about 70 euro per month and um, this year and what that means is that people can actually increase their pension contributions by about 110 120 euro per month this year and their take-home pay is going to be pretty much the exact same as their december or last year pay slip because the net cost of that extra contribution is about 70 euro per month so this year is a great opportunity for everyone to increase their pension contribution and not actually see or notice the financial impact of that in terms of their outgoings. The one that trips up a lot of people is they avoid pensions because they think you can't access them until 65 or 66 or 70, which isn't the case. Most pensions can be accessed from age 50 onwards. So they are a really effective strategy to generate wealth over the long term. And as I say, can be accessed much earlier than people think. Now, Contrary to Mary earlier, let's have a look at what saving before tax earnings and earning tax-free compounding growth looks like. John is also 30 and he saves €1,000 of his take-home wage every month, but he puts it to his pension. Now, remember, if you're saving €1,000 per month to a pension, you're actually getting a lot more hitting your pension because if you are contributing, say, €1,665 per month after the 40% relief, it's a net cost of just 999 or about 1,000 euro per month, the same outgoing as Mary earlier. So John's getting 1665 hitting his pension, whereas Mary's getting 1,000 euro hitting a bank account. He's going to invest that in a fund, which is an average return of 6% per year, which is very, very achievable, by the way. Um, and that is going to produce a fund by the time John is 55 of about 1.4 million or 680,000 in today's terms. Because remember, the returns compound tax-free. So despite having the same monthly outgoing as Mary, the difference to her fund is nearly a million euro or nearly half a million euro in today's monies. John can take 25% of his pension pot as a tax-free lump sum. The first 200k is tax-free. Next 300k is taxed at 20%. So he nets a lump sum of about 324, 325,000. He can use this to you know, clear off his debts, pay off his mortgage. And then he's a remaining part of about 1 billion euro that he can become financially independent with. So using tax efficient vehicles and in earning an inflation beat in return leads to significantly better outcomes and much more chance of financial success. Here we have two people that are putting away the exact same amount of money on a monthly basis in net terms. But the difference in terms of what that is achieving for them is massive. And it's all about getting the right advice and using the correct vehicles. Now, we talked about bank accounts and credit unions being OK for short term savings and pension is ideal for very long term savings. But let's say we want to put money away for, let's say, a period of three to four years to maybe 10 to 15 years, depending on what age you're at. And so really money that you need before the age of 50. How can we make sure that that keeps pace with inflation? The best option for most everyday people is to look at some of the fantastic and um, accessible savings and investment plans in the Irish market that are offered through some of the various insurance companies. The reason I say that is that they're just very convenient and hands off for people. And um, we deal with all the main insurance providers or investment providers in the Irish market. But my preferred plan is offered through Zurich and their plan is called the Easy Access Savings Plan. It's the one I use myself. Um, and it's the one I would see as the best savings alternative in the Irish market. It basically allows you to save into it on a monthly basis from as little as 100 euro per month. And um, it's really flexible in that you can increase, decrease, stop, restart, um, or you can take your money out at any stage at no penalty. The term of the plan is completely open ended. 
Now, different to a normal savings account, it allows you to actually invest your contributions in a wide range of Zurich savings funds that have exceptional long-term track records. And there's loads of different funds there with varying risk and reward levels. So there is something there for everybody, even if you are, I suppose, a bit of a cautious investor. And um, it is ideal for that medium to long-term savings goals, such as savings for your children's education. Um, and we do set up these accounts for people at the lowest fee structures in the Irish market. We actually give all our clients 101% allocation to cover the 1% government levy that's attached to the plan. Now, you might be wondering, what does a fund look like or where does my money go? And just to show you an example, I pulled out uh, one of Zurich's oldest and most popular funds. It's a fund called the Balance Fund. It's a fund that's launched... Uh, was launched in 1989. So it's got a 35-year track record. It's been around a long time. It's been through a lot of challenging years, financial crash in 2008, you know, COVID, dot-com bubble, you name it. Um, and it's been out the other side. It's managed by Zurich, as I said, who are the largest insurance and investment provider operating in the Irish market and one of the largest worldwide. So what you're getting with that is experience, you know, security, uh, convenience, and hands-off for you. Uh, the fund actually provides exposure to about 600 assets, including equities, bonds, cash and alternatives. Um, I'm sure people know that you know diversification is one of the most important components of investment success. So by investing your savings in a fund like this, you're getting instant levels of you know very high levels of diversification at very low entry levels. So you have huge diversification and risk management uh, at play in a fund like this. And the average returns over that long period are in the region of about 10% per year, less than 1% per year fund management charge. So there's a long-term track record of the fund significantly beating inflation, even after charges and tax. Now, some people are naturally a bit cautious when it comes to investing money. Um, we refer to risk as something called volatility, which means how much something can go up or down in a given year. And what a lot of people fail to realize is that the longer you hold your investment or the longer you have money in a fund, the, I suppose, the, the lower the risk is because markets always move upwards over a long period of time. And whilst they can be volatile over shorter periods, if you have that window of, let's say, five years or beyond, your chances of investment success are very, very high. What this bar chart is showing is the five-year annualized performance um, since the inception of the balance fund. So basically, if you were to invest in the balance fund on any year since it was launched and hold it for five years, how many of those five-year rolling periods would you have made a profit? There's only been two five-year rolling periods in the last 28 where the five-year performance was negative. That's about a 93%, 93% of five-year rolling periods gave investors a positive return. And as you can see, those unlucky people that were in the five-year period where there was a, a negative return, that might have been, say, in 2008 or something, the minus return was actually very, very small. And here's the thing. If they had kept it for seven years, 100% of seven-year periods shows a positive return. There's never been a seven-year ro rolling period since the inception of the balance fund where investors would have got a negative return. So I suppose, again, if you're looking at ways to grow your money to fund, say, children's education or, you know, that build a bit of a nest egg for yourself, and um, this really should be your, your go to. Balance is key, of course, and, um, you know, so it's really about saying how much can I put away on an ongoing basis and then decide how much of that needs to be allocated to short term, how much to medium term and how to long term. So, you know, I plan to put this portion of money away for a short period. That's that one to four year time frame. We do unfortunately need to stick to bank credit union and post. And we can't even look at some of the brilliant new deposit alternatives in the Irish market, through, such as those through Raisin Bank, where people can get like a, an interest rate of about three, four percent and a lot better than the Irish banks. It's not tax efficient. You're not getting compounding growth. And even as I mentioned, you can get rates of three to four percent, but it's still not going to keep pace with inflation after you pay interest on it. So it's not a, you know meeting any of these criteria for building wealth over the long term. Um, of the portion that you're comfortable putting away for that medium to long term period, that's say five to 10 years plus period, you can look at your Zorix savings funds or equivalent. They're not the most tax efficient, but they do benefit from compounding growth and they beat inflation. So we're meeting two out of the three. And then if we're putting money away for that very long period or, you know, to age 50 beyond, we need to look at pension funds, which are very tax efficient, 
get compounding growth and beat inflation. So it's three out of three in that case. And a financial planner essentially will help you get that balance right. Now, I am conscious that there's a lot of online material this year. You know, everyone online is claiming to be an expert. Um, most of them probably aren't qualified. And I do see a lot of people, you know, trying to go down the DIY approach when it comes to managing their money. And what I do want to stress for people is that it's really important for you to get professional advice on your financial planning journey. We have seen the DIY approach go wrong time and time again. If you have a health issue, you don't try to diagnose and treat yourself. You go to a medical professional, don't you? It's not as easy as just setting up online accounts and throwing money into them. You know, people aren't experts in the technical details such as financial planning, you know, financial math, tax, pensions, financial legislation and investing. Um, and what I find is people that are going the DIY approach are often missing a trick or numerous tricks. So financial planning, it's not about products. You know, there's many things you can do with your money, such as paying down debt, saving, pension investments, you know, gifting to family for tax reasons or otherwise. Uh, affecting protection or even just treating yourself and I suppose what a financial planner will do is help you get that balance right when it comes to you know achieving all your financial goals and the most um, I suppose the best thing about working with somebody like that and having a financial plan in place is is the peace of mind that it brings you know and um, if I look at my own situation I know when my money comes into my bank account every month and um, from my employer that my pension deductions have already come out and I know I'm contributing the right amount to my pension. I've done the projections and I know that it's on track to retire early. I then get all my money out straight away to my Zorix savings plans and my you know bank and credit union accounts for my short term. So I have a financial plan in place and what that gives me is peace of mind knowing that whatever is left in my bank account, I can enjoy life with and I know that everything else is taking care of itself. Uh, and sometimes you just need someone to keep you on plan and avoid making, you know, help you avoid making costly mistakes. There's actually a lot of studies out there that show that a, a good advisor can help increase clients after tax returns by up to 3% per year. It's something known as advisor alpha. And it's basically just coming from somebody keeping you on track. And as I said, um, helping you avoid making costly mistakes. Just sorry, now this slide is very, very busy, but it's just to show you, I suppose, the value of getting advice. And um, this is a, a real life case from a client of mine. I haven't put his name there, but this is an exact case that I actually dealt with two weeks ago. And um, there was a client came to me. He was age 41. He was married. And um, just to give you a quick overview in his financial situation, he just took out car finance. He was, um, you know, 40 grand car finance at one of the um, the dealerships. He was paying 600 euro per month at a 7.8% interest rate. He'd 60,000 euro in savings, earning barely any interest. He just moved into um, a nice new big house with his partner and they took on a larger mortgage. So their mortgage is 450 grand. And unfortunately, to get that, they had to stretch the term to age 70 and their repayments are 1,900 a month. He had 186,000 in his pension pot currently where he was paying a 5% of his salary and his employer was paying a 10%. And his main concerns were that, A, his expenses were too high, um, B, big one for him, he really wanted to get into the position where he could retire earlier, but because the mortgage was you know, stretching to age 70, he was likely going to be paying a large mortgage in his retirement years, and that's very hard to, to do retire early when you still have repayments of nearly two grand a month coming out. He was also conscious that his money wasn't working for him. He was on about the 60 grand that he has in savings and he's paying too much tax as well. He was saying before he met me, he had a plan in his head. He was just going to increase his mortgage payments by 300 per month. He went on to one of these mortgage calculate overpayment calculators online and he was telling me he was going to knock four years off his mortgage by doing that. And he wanted to talk to me about some investment options for the lump sum. The advice I gave him was to completely forget about increasing his repayments and completely forget about investing in lump sum. And that might surprise some of you. What I told him to do was to use 40,000 out of his savings to completely clear his car finance. And what that does is it would have saved 600 euro per month for him and got his money a return of 7.8% risk-free because that's what he was saving by eliminating the car repayment. I would have not been so I wouldn't have been doing my job correctly if I told them to invest money in something which carries investment risk and volatility when he had an option it right in front of him, staring him in the face, which would have got him a 7.8% risk-free return. And he still would have been left with 20 grand in an emergency fund. 
what we done then when the car payment was eliminated is we started paying 600 euro per month into the Zorix savings plan to start building back up the savings earn positive interest and all of that money is accessible so it could have constituted part of his rainy day fund and what we done then is we increased his pension by 500 euro per month 500 euro per month to his pension had a net cost of 300 which is the exact same as what it was going to go to the mortgage the result of that was that when he is 58 his remaining mortgage balance was going to be 244,000. however at 58 due to the increased payments to his pension his pod is projected to be over a million euro. As we already said, he can take a tax-free lump sum from that, which what he could have taken uh, as a lump sum would have, would have been 248,000, which is enough to completely wipe out his outstanding mortgage balance. And he's a remaining pot of about 840,000 left to retire on. So this guy at 58 can wipe out his mortgage and retire if that's what he wants to do. So we actually cleared 12 years off his mortgage this way instead of just four years. And we got him into a position where he had no short-term debt, uh, his money was working for him, and his tax bill was reduced by about two and a half grand a year due to the increased pension contributions. Now, the reason I'm showing this is that sometimes what you think is the right thing to do is actually not. And it's really important that people go get some advice from a professional rather than just going to the default setting. Sometimes it's a case of just you know reassuring people that what they are, are doing or, or what they plan to do is the correct thing, but not always the case. Now, if anybody on the call does want to go through that kind of financial planning process, um, we do offer everyone a financial planning consultation. Um, and in my experience, we make or save clients thousands of euro in this process, as I demonstrated earlier and ensure they're set up for the future for a one-off cost of €199, Euro, which covers all subsequent meetings, advice, and set up of any plans if necessary. We are very interested in forming you know, long-term relationships with all our clients. Some client, sorry, some companies out there charge €1,000 for the exact same service. So it's really about you know, helping you build a financial future when you are in control, um, understanding the leaks and gaps in your, your current finances, um, as I said from the earlier uh, slides, you know, really establishing what are our short, medium, long-term financial goals and how can we get there? Um, how can we increase our savings and disposable income by switching to cheaper policies and rates on some of our main outgoings? Uh, and we can also you know, provide tailored investment solutions to get your money working harder, such as the Zorik plans or otherwise, ensure people are operating as tax efficiently as possible and achieving and maintaining the desired lifestyle into retirement years or achieving financial independence, which as I said, is a kind of common objective between uh, or among all of our clients. And um, if that's something that would interest people, um, my contact details are there on screen. Um, feel free to drop me a message and uh, we're, we'd be happy to, to talk you through the process and what's involved in it. Now, what I'd like to do is um, open up the webinar to um, a Q&A if anybody has questions. I am joined by some of my colleagues who are monitoring the Q&A box and Ruth can um, ask the questions if anybody wants to pop in directly. Look, as I said, my contact details are there on screen. Just want to thank everybody for their time. Um, have a great long weekend. Look, and hopefully um, hear from you guys soon and look forward to working with anyone who gets in touch. Thanks.